All right, what you see here is assignment number 55, the first assignment called Making Pedigrees. And this might look familiar to some of you because this was actually a question on your science kneecap test. And I was kind of bummed out because one week later, we we're going over it. Um, but a pedigree, I might have mentioned in the last video, is basically like a family tree um, showing which individual married which individual and their offspring. Um, but here we're going to look at how genetics are passed along. So this example is just a very simple pedigree. You're asked a couple questions about identifying the names of Irene and Leo's sons, their son-in-laws, how many grandchildren. Um, that's all pretty self-explanatory, um, but I want to go right to the last question. And so it says, um, Richard and Emily had another son whom they named Roger. So if we look at Richard and Emily right in the middle here, we're going to add a line and a square for their son Roger. All right. um, you can see in the key, males have a square shape, females have a circle. If people are married, they're connected with a line, and then when they have children, that line then comes drops down. So, next thing says Juliet. On the far left, she married a man named Robert, and they had a daughter named Elizabeth. So if we look over to the left, we connect Juliet to Rob, and they had a little girl named, we're going to nickname her Liz. And then finally, all the way on the right, Zach married a woman named Jean. And i got to try to fit in here. They had a son named Craig. All right, so pedigrees are pretty simple in terms of reading. Um, you're going to end up setting up some on your own. And again, all you really have to remember is male have a square shape, female have a circle. If they're married, you connect them. Um, and then offspring, you draw a line from the middle of the two um, to include the offspring. All right. So now we're going to look at how genetics are passed along. And in your packet, it talks about sex-linked traits on the very next page. And I'm going to kind of talk about a sex-linked trait, and hopefully it gives you a little better understanding. Um, I'm going to skip over these two slides all right, and get to this here. So this is not in your packet. Um, but I think this is kind of the simplest way to explain it. So, all we're really looking at here is the diagram in the middle, all right, with your male and female chromosomes. And if you remember, when we did the uh, face traits packet, um, we talked about males have XY chromosome, females have XX. And if you look at the picture, you'll notice that the male Y chromosome here is actually physically smaller than the X chromosome. All right, and so if you can go back to when we first started introducing vocabulary terms and you made your flashcards and I cut out those diagrams of the chromosomes split up into two, they're called homologs, um, and we had the different colored rows with the different letters and we were introducing all the terms. All right, if you notice, the male X chromosome at the top there has a recessive allele A, whatever that is. All right, and you'll notice that because the Y chromosome is smaller, the male is missing a spot to have an opposing or a corresponding chromosome. So there's no chance of the male having a dominant allele or another recessive allele. So when that's the case, if a male has or a male carries a recessive allele on their X chromosome, that means they actually have that recessive trait because they don't have a spot on their Y chromosome to carry the dominant allele to then hide the recessive trait like you see over on the right side with the female. All right, so some sex-linked traits, some are mentioned, um, but there's one called red-green color blindness. Um, people really can't tell the difference between red and green. Um, there's a sex-linked trait called hemophilia, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, and there's a few others um, that are just male-specific. Females can have them, um, but they're much more prominent in males because they're on that X chromosome and there's no Y chromosome to oppose it. So, if we go back to this here, all right, this is a very, very, very famous pedigree of the royal family in England. And these people might not look or sound very familiar to you, um, but this next diagram here, all right, this will look a little bit familiar because in the news you have Princess Kate, and she's married to Prince William, and their brother Harry, they're down at the bottom. All right, this is part of their, they're part of this royal family. All right, 
um, Prince Charles and Princess Diana and all that stuff. Um, this is part of their royal family, all right? But if we go back to this here, the royal family has a recessive allele, a recessive trait that's been passed on from generation to generation um, known as hemophilia. Hemophilia is sex-linked, again, meaning if the male has it on his X chromosome, he actually has the disorder. And what it is is it prevents your blood from clotting. So if you cut your skin, normally your blood clots, it thickens, um, slows the bleeding, you form a scab, you know, and you're fine. Hemophiliacs um, don't carry the protein to start the clotting, so they could technically bleed to death. So if you look at the diagram, all the females that are colored in halfway, that means they're carriers, so that means they have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. All, right? um, all the males that are colored in black they have hemophilia. So that means they have that one recessive allele on their X chromosome, so they actually have the disorder. Right? And so what you're going to do is you're going to fill in the genotype in the key all right, for all these people. So if it's a carrier female, we're going to label her capital N, lowercase n. All right? She's a hybrid. Um, if it's a normal female, that means she doesn't have the trait. So we're going to label her with two capital N's. If a male has it, if he's a darkened shape, we're going to give him just one lowercase end. And if the male doesn't have it, that means he carries the dominant allele. We're just going to label him with the capital N. So if we go through, we can actually kind of jump ahead all right, and start with Prince Albert. Um, so he doesn't have hemophilia, so he gets capital N. Queen Victoria, she's a carrier, so she is a hybrid capital and lower, lowercase. All right? Then we're going to go through, and we're going to label all the males that do not have hemophilia. So they're all the squares that have not been colored in. All right, pretty easy. Then we're going to move along. All right, all the females that do not have hemophilia, they get two capital N's. So we'll label all them. All right, and I also just added all the females that are carriers, capital N lowercase. All right, so they're hybrids. And now we're going to label all the males who actually have hemophilia with a lowercase n. And I think I missed one all the way on the right. All right, I missed a couple. But the big picture is if we move all the way down, all right, uh, to Maria Christina, all right, there's a question about um, she's just been found to have hemophilia, so that changed her genotype to a capital N lowercase n and we changed her um, shape to be halfway shaded. She's a carrier. All right. So let's now move right, to your pedigree pra practice packet. There's our royal family. All right. 